programming, so that fair with this? And eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Francine Shapiro, a young woman from California, had some phenomenal success dealing with victims of, uh, 70 and 80 year old victims of the Holocaust, who at that age were starting to it started to bubble out of them. They weren't, they were, they weren't going to survive. She, she did this, she did this work that was adopted by all the Jewish Family Services, and I know now uh, in the psychology community it's really big because here in the United States, issues, they've been, help, they've been using it to work with Vietnam veterans who had no other way out of releasing this. And it was about left brain, right brain processing. If something's trapped on one side or the other. Until you get that balanced, it's going to stay trapped. Uh, another one here, NLP. Let's, let me give you a good idea of how it works with computers. Okay, visual construction. Our minds, eyes tend to go up here when we're, when we're accessing or doing visual constructive work. Visual memory up here, and basically we're massaging our lobes as well as as well as responding to where the electrical patterns are. Auditory construction, auditory remembered, kinesthetic remembered, and construction, inner voice. Okay, but when we're sitting in front of a computer, what happens? Instead of moving up into this visual construction area, we shift our eyes way over there where it says file, edit, view, and so on down the line. <laughs> That's not a good place for, you know, for our eyes to be moving around when we're, you know, I mean, we, we just dropped our consciousness down to 7% of its activity. We just dropped it down to, you know, by 50% again, if not more. Okay, we're putting the positioning of these things in an inorganic place as opposed to first looking at the organic opportunities here. Okay, pattern for reprogramming. This is what, where we get into EMDR. Well, having wide sweep of movements, keeping us aware, keeping us alert, keeping us moving from one side of the brain to the other. The people that are poo-pooing any technology, any, any of the right brain, left brain stuff are still caught in the trap that they, their stuff is in the old book. Okay, it's just, but you know, sir, it's being used, it has been used for, you know, for years and for a decade now, and it should be there. Left brain, right brain, the composition support the convenience. I'm just gonna go really quickly. Left brain behavior, which they, everyone keeps saying, no, the same amount comes through as distributed. Depending upon what's going through the brain, it says up to 70% of what goes on here will be responded to through the left eye. Okay, it's not a 50-50 thing. 70%, which is a common test component, is you know, significantly higher than 30. <laughs> so let's just know that this is dominant and that basically, you know, one side names, faces, organized, spontaneous, realistic, fantasy, logic, institution. As we go through here and realize where the logic is, okay, that this is very logically oriented here, very structured, this is very spontaneous and creative. Yes, sir, we know that the logic side goes in through the right eye, use it. Put it on that side of the screen. <laughs> you want to go through the creative process? With all the distraction going on, you can see the opportunities for refinement in here. Uh, all, all these problems are actually doors for opportunity. Context, layout, environment, and more. It just goes on forever. Okay, let me go back here for a second. Communication is less about the conveyance of information than it is about the accomplishment of goals. I grew up in Calgary. My family's been in Calgary for over 100 years. Most of my relatives are in the States, but my family, you know, I grew up there. I was born in Vancouver, not far from where this sign is. <laughs> I can <laughs> In Canada, we're into communication. Why? It says, it's, it says it's the only way we can run a country that big with a minimum amount of stress and, pro and issues. It says it's also about truth and depth. I can't think of a more discomforting role than having to pick up doggy poo after a doggy. I don't have dogs and cats. I'm, of all these allergies, and I'm bronchial asthmatic, you know, every Jewish disease possible. But I love dogs and cats, and I have my friends. I can't believe what they have to do. Now, this might be the only park in North America where they do it with a smile on their face. You know? Think about it. I mean, this is, before we can enhance communication, we first have to eliminate the conflicts which inhibit perception. It says, says you know, and then we can go forward from there. And the consequences of current design approaches, the amount of student time and lost and wasted. Employee time wasted and stolen is unbelievable. Stress-related medical time 
you know, there's more diseases that come, you know, our whole immune system drops with the stress we have in front of there. A person who spends three and a half hours in front of a computer is going to have 25, 20 to 25 percent more time lost in any eight year cycle and illness than a person who spends an hour or less in front of a computer. And it gets worse from there. Only, you know, and, and I've been lecturing all around the world. I had guys from the United States bring lawyers with them to tell them when to leave certain parts of the workshop and come back because they don't want to have to answer to their staff three years from now saying, you had this information three years ago. You could have saved my illness. They're afraid of liabilities. And the costs involved in this is unmoving. 400,000 cases a year of, you know, repetitive stress injuries. <coughs> now, these are the ones that are being paid for by the government. Okay, 400,000 new ones every year. Some of them last for eight years. The estimated cost in the US, in, here in the United States, for 80, 50 to 85 billion dollars a year. Okay, you're talking, you know, you're from 150 to 250 million dollars a day, okay, going into this thing. The not so not commonly known consequences that we have to deal with here, diminished functioning and efficiency, okay. When you figure that these kids are going in, they're sitting at the computers and they're working at a level that they're lucky to get to be working at a 10 or 15 percent efficiency level from where they could be if we design things appropriately. The four hour workshop, when you go into the detail and look at the physiological and break them down and look at some of these things, you start to realize that, you know, sort of the computer is a conveyance. As soon as we stop treating it as the conveyance, what is worse, the unmet expectations of teachers, of everybody in the system, when someone gets out there and, you know, with this grandiose thing, the computer is here to save us, okay? The internet is here to save us, it has everything. Well, you know, it says, I, I, I just think of the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages. We have a book that has everything. It's going to give us all of our answers. Every individual is unique. Everybody has to be treated as an individual. But we do know enough about what's common in every individual at a physiological level. The sociological issues, okay, are critical. We have to start feeding them. Every one of these things affects the memory uh, for retention, but the att attention factors and how we interpret the information we're going to see and hear. The intellectual authority, false authority, the technological positioning. It says the <coughs> access and availability of what's being indexed. The information. Right now on the internet, 70% of all the advertising money goes to 10 sites. That's how much we're using the internet. It says, who knows what's going on in the internet? The guy is spending money. And they know that, hey, you know, 70% of the actions have 10 sites. Right off the bat, this is the dollars being spent in advertising. The propaganda, cash is the controller. Eight corporations, you know, own everything from Time, Newsweek, every major news service in North America. And I thank you for your time. I thank you very, very much for coming. And I thank the Fox fa the families and the organization for letting me come and speak.